I know this has been a long journey for you. What kind of emotions are you going through right now? <laughs> uh, relief. I'm just uh-huh. relieved, honestly, that the movie's finally coming out. It's been a long, long road. Yeah. Did you, when when you produce a film, um, and and you've produced many great ones, is mm-hmm. what is is there a sense of closure, or is it always? I would imagine it's always a part of you. But no, you, I don't. Not really. I mean, for me at least, I, I'm sure everybody's different. But I mean, for me, once the movie is released, um, there's a sense of closure. And one of the things that one of the things I really really like about what I do is that you know when the movie's released you you get either affirmation for doing good work or or you get killed and um and uh I kind of like that you know I I I like that you make something and you put it out there and and people get to kind of vote you know they vote with their dollars whether they 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 enjoyed it or not yeah but at the same time it's got to be uh nerve-wracking because these these are your these are your children that you've worked so hard to nurture Sure, and and you you know of course it is a little nerve wracking, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess it specifically on Red Dawn, I, I I'm a little bit at peace with it. I mean, it's been it's been so many you know so many years now of, of work. If you if you think about the, going from development into production into post production, the delay we had, then we had to post it again. So it's been it's been you know several years so it, it, it i'm ready it's time i, I want yeah. people to 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 see it and and hopefully enjoy it so what was the impetus for for this this reboot what what made you think this this can work well it was really an opportunity i mean mgm controlled the rights uh to red dawn and they were interested in potentially uh, rebooting it, and and that was that seemed like a great opportunity. So so we approached them and 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 uh, gave them kind of a quick little pitch on how you know what we were thinking, some of the changes we would make, um, and then they said, okay, well let's uh, let's go to writers and see if we can we can get a script. So it was really uh, it comes down to just being such a fan of the original movie. It seemed like a great opportunity, um, and uh, and I'm you know I'm really glad we pursued it. Was the uh, when you, when you were thinking on how to update it, the kind of the different international climate today, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the the modern kind of face of terrorism in particular, did that play a role in, in that? Well, yeah, I mean, it, in some ways, I guess it did. I mean, when you're when you're you know when you're at step one and you're trying to figure out what story you're going to tell. You know, we went through all kinds of different scenarios on how to, who would the bad guys be? What would, you know, what's the impetus for the invasion? Um, and and given that it was, you know, I'm going to guess this is about 2007, 2008 when we when we were in the middle of this. Um, terrorism was, you know, has been on everybody's mind since 2001. So that was something that was, you know, given some thought to, but quickly discarded as there was no way to, you know, make that work. Um, and um, it tr- it really proved to be quite a challenge uh, to find a way to create a, a an, an invasion of the United States. I mean, there just simply aren't that many countries that that can pull it off. So we had to take that into account and um, design the movie uh, around you know a plausible way that that an invasion would be possible. Well, in terms of you know, aside from how you wanted to make your film different, what you know, Red Dawn, uh, the original film, is such a beloved kind of classic of the '80s era, uh, and I'm curious, what do you think the core of that uh, of that love is, and and was it important to maintain that in, in your version? Yeah, of course it, it is. It was definitely important to maintain that in our version. But it's a good question. I mean, why was Red Dawn so special? I get asked that all the time, right? Mm-hmm. I think that one of the reasons is the time that it was released. Okay, you can't ignore that it was a you know came out during the Cold War and you know played uh, it, it played real well on on Cold War fears. But when you think about the story, and if you're trying to find a way to retell the story. You have to look for other aspects of the story. Is there something bigger about the story that is actually one of the reasons why it touched so many people? 
-hmm. And we would argue the answer to that question is yes. And the thing that is bigger is this notion of what do you do in this situation? I mean, are you a hero? Will you step up and fight for your family and fight for your neighborhood? You know, there's something very primal about that. And if you can capture that, then I think the story is, you know, universal or timeless, I guess I should say, and would would work at any time. And, you know, I was talking to somebody earlier, and if you think about the birth of this country and the people that were here in 1776, I mean, they had to make this decision. And when we know what they did. And so my point is is that this type of story has existed throughout history many, many, many times. And I think, you know, uh, that makes it something that works whether there's a Cold War or not. Right. Yeah, it is a very universal kind of theme uh, that we all face in one in one form or another. I mean, mm-hmm. that kind of stepping up into adulthood and th- th- those defining moments can t- kind of define what kind of person you want to be under pressure. Um, did, do you have any conversations with Milius? No. Never spoken to him. And uh, I think he said publicly, I mean, he, he you know, he, he he's not a fan that, <laughs> that we pursued this. Mm, that's surprising. And it's too bad you never spoke to him. Cause it I, it I actually love... doesn't surprise me. And, I, and, I, and to be totally honest, I completely respect his position. Um, I'm sh- I'm sure I would I'm not sure how I would feel if somebody you know took something that I created and and you know reworked it I, I I'm 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 not sure I'd be cool with that so I mm. I get I get where he's coming from and and completely you know respect his position. Well, with that film, uh, I mean there was there were a cast of young stars that do, that just like blossomed into bigger bigger things in, in in the years that followed and you're extremely uh fortunate with the cast that you've assembled here mm-hmm. i mean you you have some stars that have that have already exploded but mm-hmm. when you're when you're casting i mean for the individual roles they have to be right for those but they also have to be right together um a, a, as an ensemble mm-hmm. Uh, when was it clear to you that that they all clicked that this was a special group? Well, I mean, during the casting process, you know, it's common to do chemistry reads with actors that will have scenes together, and so of course we did that, and we saw it seemed that the people we cast would be good in the roles and good with each other, but it really wasn't until we started uh, rehearsals and and training that uh that you know and you know we put our cast through a pretty rigorous um military uh training program um and uh and that's a great way to get the cast to bond and get to know each other and learn to trust each other and inevitably if you have those things working for you you usually get pretty good performances mhm well, this I know that this movie, uh, your your film has. Uh, when was it? When was the production complete on it? Uh, the production uh, wrapped at the end of two thousand and nine. Okay, so this has been a long road, and I, I guess it was kind of it was stalled by uh, bankruptcy of MGM. Yes, yes, wow. MGM went into bankruptcy. Was it difficult to keep the faith in these years? Um, in some ways it was, but in other ways it wasn't. I mean, I, I, I felt that we, we had something pretty good here and, and, um, I, I felt confident that what we had aspired and set out to do, we had achieved whether that, whether the audience agrees with me, by the way, or not, that's yet to be seen, but at least what we tried to make was, was, was made, um, the way we wanted it to be made. Um, but yeah, certainly. I mean, when you're when you're facing those types of challenges that are much bigger than you, and you have a big company, they're going through a bankruptcy, the future's uncertain. You know, yeah, it, it, it is hard, and and it became harder, frankly, once they emerged from bankruptcy and no longer um, had distribution, and had to find somebody else to distribute the movie. And um, you know, the, the movie was was very politically sensitive to a lot of these other distributors and and thus we had to make some changes to it. Have you had an opportunity to to see how your film plays with an an audience? Uh yes, I mean I tested it um I tested it uh once. Okay. So um, and we've had some promotional screenings since then. So yeah, I I mean I've seen it I've seen it play with an audience. 
and 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 how fulfilling is that? I mean, you because I think about that if I'm if if this is my baby and I'm unveiling it to an audience for the first time, uh, <laughs> I don't think I, I think I would not be able to sit still. It's a it's a nerve wracking experience. I mean, because at the end of the day, the only reason you're making these movies is for them, mm-hmm. and you know, of course, you put a lot of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears, and you know, God know you know, emotion and everything else into this. But it's all for nothing if it doesn't work, if the audience doesn't respond to it. So, yeah, that is that is pretty uh, nerve-wracking. But luckily with this movie, um, you know, it the audiences I've shown it to or seen it with have, have responded fantastically. So it's been... It's been very rewarding in that sense. We had a we had a uh, sort of a premiere type event up in Port Wyneme at a naval base uh, last week, and and seeing this movie with uh, those folks was was really special. Oh, I would imagine that had to be gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the material, I mean, what because you've done films in in all kinds of genres, uh, what does it have to do for you? How does it have to pull you in? Oh man, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, material stories either speak to you or they don't, you know. Um so it, it I guess it's just kind of a gut kind of feeling. Um I don't I don't I don't know that I have a better answer for it than that. Mm-hmm. Um sometimes you're, you know, sometimes things come along and you know, the the challenge of making it is 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 something that you consider. I mean, I, I seem to be really drawn to action movies, and I, I think it's not just because I like the genre so much, but also because I like how complicated and and tough they are to make. Um, yeah. And there's so many um, there's so many elements that go into a good action movie. I mean, you know, uh, all the normal things, how it's shot, and you know, the actors, and you know, who your director is, and all that, of course, but sound and music and many, many, many things. And I, I don't know, I. I there's part of me, I guess, that gets off on how yeah. complex <laughs> that genre is to make. Yeah, and you've made. I mean, I I love so many of your films, uh, and I, I do think they're so diverse. But when you look back and you think of the movies that shaped you in your life, what's what are one or two titles that that you that you look at and you say, man, if I make something that approaches that. I, I can die a happy man. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm I'm going to answer the the question maybe a little differently. I mean, the, I thought what you were going to ask me was what are the what are, what are the movies that you love the most or whatever the biggest influences. Of course, if I ever made either of these movies, I'd die a happy man. But I don't presume to be able to uh, have the genius of uh, George Lucas or Steven Spielberg. So mm. I would answer Star Wars and and Raiders. I mean, I grew up in the '80s, and and those movies changed my life. They're, they're, those are the reasons. You know, those are the reasons why I, I got into the movie business. It's it's guys like that and Jim Cameron and you know um, those those movies from the '80s really had a big impact on me. Yeah, well, yeah, and I'm probably your same age group, so so definitely me too. Do you think that since that time, do you think that the audiences have changed at all? Do you think there's a cynicism, or is there still kind of a an open magical kind of feeling amongst the audiences of today. Oh, I think there's 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 definitely a magical feeling amongst the audiences today. I mean, look at what Pixar Pixar does today. Mm. You know. Yeah. I mean, those movies, okay, you could you could say well, they're kids movies, but I know lots of adults that go see those movies and, you know, I'll include myself in that. And I think it's because of the their ability to create magic on screen. 